Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Great to have you all out uh, uh, on this journey with us today. It's Speaking with Gravity. We're back with another season, season eight. This is episode 65. And our topic, we got a very interesting topic for y'all today. Uh, healing is your responsibility. It's wow. up to you, right? Uh, so we're going to, uh, that's what we're going to dive into today. We're going to talk about healing um, and how really you have to accept it as, uh, and really take ownership of it. Accept it as your own, right? Mm -hmm. It's a journey. Healing is a journey. So, uh, and we're more than willing to go on that journey with you all. So today, though, um, with this new season, I think this is the first time that this uh, ensemble, yeah, the, the, this <laughs> trio. ensemble. There you go. That this trio has been has been before you um, as your host, right? Uh, yeah. Just us three. Uh, so we've had some great hosts uh, in the past, uh, going forward, at least with this season. This is this is the group right here. This is your uh, this is your Justice League. Yeah, <laughs> we fam. If you like DC, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so but, but I do think it is important to uh, you know kind of go through and introduce ourselves, reintroduce ourselves uh, mm -hmm. to you all. So I'll start off. Uh, so I'm Joshua Williams. I think I've been around for maybe like two seasons now, um, and I must put out there I'm not a mental health professional. These two. Are they work in the field of mental health? Um, so definitely lean on them. Um, I do want to also preface that uh, although, this, although this is a mental health podcast, please don't take you know uh, what we say as your mental health services. Right? Um, you still want to go through and you know see someone if you're you know yeah yeah yes. see someone professionally. But let me uh, let's go down the line, y'all, and uh, make sure everybody know who we is today. Yes, yeah, so I'm Hannah. I'm so excited to be back for this for another season. I think the last time I was on Speaking for Gravity, um, I was a student. So I was a grad student, and by the grace of God, I've been able to graduate. So Praise him. As, woof, by the grace of God. So as uh, Josh mentioned, I am a mental health professional now um, in the field of counseling and just excited to help our community. Mm. It's my turn. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Terrence Dawkins. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, primarily in Spartanburg, South Carolina, but I'm also licensed in North Carolina. And I have my own private practice called Missing Pieces Counseling Services, but I also work at a university counseling center. The first time I was on Speaking with Gravity was last year. I was on one episode, and then me and Kervin, the we developed a relationship, and he asked me to be a host, and I jumped at the opportunity because I always like to be able to speak about mental health, spread awareness about it, and um, so that the community can heal, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much what we're talking about today. Healing is your responsibility. Yeah, and I forgot to mention that I am located in Charlotte, North Carolina, but uh, we're just a large family located across multiple states and just trying to reach people in all states and um, countries, so. Yeah, okay. so what is healing? Yeah, ooh, what is healing? That's a good start. That's a good. I'm going to say this. Terrence is healing. Can you show everybody your shirt, Terrence? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we started off. Know yeah, that thing does. Look. Let me tell you. So this shirt, uh, it actually tell says us about it. Yeah. Uh, healing, uh, a lot can happen between unlearning and growing. Powerful. Mm -hmm. And this shirt was actually made by a close friend in Spartanburg. Her name is Sierra Young. And Shut up. You might want to stand up. Oh, I can stand up. I ain't got no problem with that. Excuse the stomach, though. We <laughs> reworking on it so <laughs> she made these uh mental health shirts and if you pay attention to it it actually has it's the friday theme mm. the movie yeah. friday okay it's the friday font friday theme she has another one for set it off and she mm -hmm. has another one for i want to say love jones okay okay very and intentional she sell those and again her name's sierra young and when you ask what is healing, I think healing, of course, is a journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't, a lot of people think, you know, I have to have something wrong as far as like a mental health diagnosis or something like that in order to begin healing. But we all experience things throughout life. Mm -hmm. And those experiences have some type of impact on us. And we can begin to heal from those impacts if they affect us negatively mm -hmm. because of the different behaviors that they might result in. Um, we call those maladaptive behaviors or the different relationships that they impact. We have to begin to heal ourselves in order to have fulfilling relationships or have, um, you know, be able to be able to work our job effectively. So 
things mm-hmm. like that. So I think a healing journey doesn't necessarily mean something has to be diagnosable, mm-hmm. but it's just that something has happened and you need to be able to heal from it. I think of the word uh, restoration, and I'm so mm-hmm. glad you mentioned the word journey because healing is not uh, linear. Mm-hmm. You know, this is mm-hmm. a process, a journey that goes up, comes down, um, and so many different factors influence one's healing um, process or journey. So when I think of healing, I think of something that is restored, um, and it always starts with yourself. I think we can look at other people and say, oh, this person needs to heal from this behavior, or this person, you know, needs to heal from this traumatic experience. But what about ourselves? Yeah. I love it. I love it. I like restoration. I like that. Yeah. And it's like you said, it's not linear because you're going to have moments where things are very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then something's going to happen and bring you right back down. Mm-hmm. And that can be draining at times, but you have to stay the course because, as you said, it's not linear. You're going to have your up and downs. But you got to look at the end goal. What is the end goal that I'm trying to reach? And that is mm-hmm. to have this uh, fulfilling relationship. That is to be a great parent. That is to be a, a great um, you know, sibling or a great son, daughter, whatever that might be for whatever it is that you're looking for. Uh, we all have to heal from something. Mm-hmm. I think... I think what's so important in what you said is identifying what we need to heal from. Mm. Um, we can't reach that process of healing um, or, you know, until we identify what is it we have to heal from. Is it a traumatic experience? Is it a bad relationship? Is it childhood trauma? Um, mm. You know, what is it that we need to heal from? And in some scenarios or in some situations, it's multiple things we need to heal from. Mm-hmm. So what's the starting point? Um, what's what's the elephant in the room that, you know, we need to heal from right now so that we can advance to start healing from other situations that we've experienced in life? And I think it's like an onion, right? Mm. Like once you start unraveling that thing, man, you, you're going to uncover the, the things that you uncover. You uncover more Sometimes trauma, right, mm-hmm. and things that you that you have to address. So healing from one thing, a lot of times I feel like affects other things as well, and it, and it forces you. Once you start the healing process, it forces you to look at other parts of your life. Mm-hmm. I feel like. Why do you think some people choose not to heal? Mm, they scared. That's a big one. Scared. I'm. I'm a. Yeah. Scared. Go ahead. Go ahead on that. Go ahead on no, that. they're scared and they're afraid. Mm-hmm. And I can understand why. Mm-hmm. Because uh-huh. when you begin to, like you said, with this onion, peel back those layers, Oof. you start to realize, oh, man, this did have an impact on me. Or this is why I react that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you actually have to start changing some of the behaviors and things that you're doing. And those things have become comfortable. And mm-hmm. you created those behaviors in order to protect you. So now you leave yourself open to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a scary thing, to be Very. vulnerable with people. And I think that's why people don't do it. They get comfortable in knowing that this works for me. Mm-hmm. But then at what I've learned as a therapist, those different behaviors that started to work eventually stop working as you get older. Mm-hmm. Especially, and you'll see that in, like I said, relationships. You'll see that when, when something triggers you and that never did before. Or you say, oh, I've healed from that. But you just suppressed suppressed it. And mm. then you have another situation Big that comes difference. up that's yeah. similar. And then you react the same way. So I think people are scared to start begin their healing journey. Mm. Definitely scared, man. I think about it as I was healing through some things. I realized, and that shirt, one of the words on that shirt is unlearn. Mm-hmm. Like you talk about unlearning. Had to unlearn some things. It's kind of like I had to take off some things, right? Mm-hmm. Had to address some things and take, take off some things. And it leaves a void there. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about, uh, you know, uh, insecurity, you know, th- this thing that you've been relying on for so long, this behavior or this predisp- predisposition to think a certain way, mm-hmm. now that you've taken that off, what's going to go there? Right. Right? Exactly. You, there's a void there. So it's like, mm-hmm. what, what am I going to put in that space? And if you don't have anything, sometimes you feel like, oh, man, I need to go back, right? You're, you're mm-hmm. relying on that. You mentioned vulnerable mm-hmm. earlier, right? So there's... There's a uh, there's a fear there that um, that's understandable. That's understandable. Mm-hmm. So where do we, you know, as you as you all have been, you know, coaching people, have been um, helping people through their journeys. What's uh, how t- how do we get over that fear? Like what's a, or how do we address that fear? Maybe it's not getting over it, but good question. You know. I think self-awareness, we can start with self-awareness. Um, and just rephrase your question one more time. You're saying, how do we get over the fear of... 
healing. Yeah, yeah. So um, specifically, I feel as though there's that vulnerability part. Mm-hmm. So getting past that, right? Getting past that feeling vulnerable and that void being there. Wow, what do I do now? I feel exposed now, right? Mm-hmm. What, what do I do? What are some things that I can do to, to get over that fear of being exposed? Yeah, I think self-awareness is so important. Um, when we understand and recognize what triggers us, um, then we're able to start that process of healing. So I think self-awareness is very important in your healing process. Yeah. And I'm actually going to go back for a minute. Let's go back. Um, about when you said or asked the question, why don't people... Uh, want to heal mm-hmm. it is because they're afraid I believe that but I also believe they don't know that they need to heal mm. Mm. because what they've been doing has been working for so long for so long that it's become normal mm-hmm. and let's really think about this I am my area of focus and what and the framework that I use is intergenerational trauma mm. Our parents or caregivers, whoever that is, they probably don't know that they need to heal. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They, how they raised us or showed up for us, impacts how we see ourselves, how we see other people, how Mm -hmm. we see the world, and how we interact with the world. Yes, sir. So if they don't know that they need to heal, why would we think that? Mm -hmm. Because the way that they parent, you know, whether that's through the disciplinary actions, the things that they, the things that they verbally said to us, and the impact that had. And I can take it all the way back because I love everything intergenerational trauma-wise. But there was this specific example of if it was in the book, uh, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome by Dr. Mm. Joy DeGruy. Such a great book. If, let's say, a mother and a young black child walk mm-hmm. into a bank, the black child sees this white child over here playing. Mm-hmm. Now, this black child is like, ooh, I want to go play. But the mother says, no, you stand over here by me. You can't go over there. And the child tries to go over there. Mom pulls the child back. What is that teaching the child? Well, that child can play, but you can't. Mm -hmm. But the point of it is, back in the day, that child needed to stay by mom because if you wandered off, it was unsafe for you. Mm -hmm. Right? So now that child internalized, there's something wrong with me. I'm different. But mother's intention was safety. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times we internalize a lot of things as children that we don't really think about. And like I said, become comfortable, secondhand nature. And our parents just know that this is what I need to do to protect them, but they never really think about how is it impacting us. And then that's when things become normalized. Mm. I will say in my personal experience, um, and thank you for sharing that example with you. I I will say in my personal experience, some people are afraid of healing, um, like you said, because they may be the first in their family. Mm. Um, This may be something that's uncommon for generations, for generations. um, Activities and behaviors that have been normalized for so long, um, it takes that one person to change for an entire family. And I think that healing just starts with one person. um, And it can influence a large amount of people. I call myself, and it's also from another book. I don't read a lot, but I've been reading more mm-hmm. to learn more about this thing called intergenerational trauma. But it's a book called uh, Break the Cycle. It's mm-hmm. a new book that came out in January, and she calls it um, Generational Cycle Breakers. Mm. And I like to call myself a generational cycle breaker because, like you said, it takes one person. And, and I've taken on that role to be that person in my family. And you get blowback from that sometimes, from mm-hmm. not just your family, but from the community and from society. And with that blowback, you you do it kind of makes you hesitant with like, hey, maybe I shouldn't do this or maybe I should. And you shared a personal story. My personal story is, you know, I can remember the things that my mom used to say, like, you better you better come home for that street light hit you. Don't mm-hmm. let the street light catch you. That's what she said. There's a couple times it did catch me, but we ain't gonna talk about what happened. <laughs> All right. So things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, things like stop crying before I give you something to cry about. Mm-hmm. Those different sayings. They, again, they have an intention behind it. And come home before the street lights come on is our parents become dysregulated. Pretty much they don't know how to manage their emotions, and they become dysregulated, and they start to worry. And they don't know how to manage that a lot of times, mm-hmm. especially in the black community. Dysregulated, was it? Dysregulated means they can't manage their emotions. Okay. So the emotions going... Things are off balance. Off balance, right? And they don't know how to deal with it. So she becomes worried about me if I'm not home before the streetlights come on. But let's think about this. Mm -hmm. In the black community, 
back in the day, if you wanted to take it to slavery or mm-hmm. even bef- uh, even after that, mm-hmm. if you were not home by the time it got dark, what happened? Unsafe. Unsafe for you, mm-hmm. right? So we've taken that particular principle and passed it throughout all these generations. And now we have parents saying the same thing, but we're internalizing it probably different or the same way and it has an impact. Mm-hmm. And I remember those things. And when I started reading these books, I started to really think about that. I was like, man, I messed up a little bit because of how I internalized it. Mm-hmm. And so that's when I knew that I had to start breaking some of these cycles and paying attention to how I word things to my nieces and nephews, realizing that I had some things I needed to work on. You know, I have a therapist. I recommend it. everybody yes. get a therapist. You know, I am a mental health therapist who has a therapist, and I recommend it. And that's how I began my healing journey is realizing the little small things that had a major impact on me and be trying to begin to heal those things. And I think um, back to what you said, Josh, when we're unlearning so many different behaviors, we have to replace that with something healthy. Um, mm. And in that process, I heard you saying like, OK, we've been taught so many of so many patterns and maladaptive behaviors um, from previous generations. But once we unlearn all of that, um, in different areas, whether it's religious, um, within one's household, relationship-wise, parenting-wise, once we unlearn those negative behaviors, we have to replace it with something mm-hmm. positive. And that's why healing is so ongoing and so continuous. You say that, you know, you've been reading lately. Mm-hmm. Um, you're in the profession. However, you're still learning. It's a continuous cycle. Um, and healing is the same. It's the same way. You have good days. You have bad days. Um, sometimes I like to compare healing to grief because grief is sometimes so prominent um, in, like, one's healing process. But grief is ugly some days, and some days it's, 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 you know, I'm not going to say pretty, but you can smell. You have the ability to smell, and some days it's just completely ugly. Um, And healing is the same way, whether whatever you're healing from. Yeah. I got a question. Yes, sir. You you made a great point. You have to replace it with something. So the first question is, do you believe you've been on a healing journey? And this is for each of you, Mm -hmm. and I'll answer as well. But do you believe you've been on a healing journey? If so, what have you replaced it with, those things? Yeah, I can start off. I have been on a healing journey, and I didn't recognize that I needed to go on a healing journey until the people around me... um, recognize some things that I didn't even recognize about myself. So I can just, you know, take accountability and start there. Even me going into the field of mental health, um, I've I've been so resilient and just took on so many things for so long that, you know, I didn't think that I, me, Hannah, needed to heal, but I did. So other people influenced me to start my healing journey. Um, and while I was unlearning some things, I personally replaced replace that those voids with God Mm -hmm. so um, I've been able to get closer to God and whatever your spiritual walk is um, you know that is something I would suggest replacing those activities you used to do maladaptive behaviors Um, can you help me name a few yeah Uh, going to drugs yeah drugs alcohol sex gambling Mm -hmm. those are a few addictive behaviors it could don't think about sex being one oh sex is definitely one Mm -hmm. oh it's it's definitely one no you're good because you got to think about it. A lot of people use sex for connection. Yeah. Mm. And, or they, or it might not even be connection. They just use sex for sex. That's all mm-hmm. it is. So they have sex with multiple partners. Um, they don't really, they, now I'm getting into what I like, the avoidant people. So, mm-hmm. so these are attachment styles. So they're avoidant, meaning they don't get connections or don't like connections Keep with people. very superficial. So, superficial, very distant, and they just have these surface level relationships and they use sex because it's, it's, I, don't, I don't have to truly connect with you. Mm-hmm. So sex can definitely be one of those maladaptive behaviors because you're using it in order to cover up to some mask, mask mm-hmm. something you're trying to heal from. So mm-hmm. that definitely can be one. Yeah. So once once I recognized those maladaptive behaviors that I was experiencing, one, I had to eliminate them, and that's a hard process in itself. Um, you have to be strategic, but you have to cut those things out of your life um, or at least, you know, start cutting and eliminating those behaviors out of your life before you're able to replace them with something better. So in my personal experience, I replaced it by um, 
just getting more serious about my spiritual journey and reading books, I would say. Um, something else I did was getting closer to the people I love. Mm. Yep. I think, I think for me, uh, and, and I definitely have been on a healing journey, and I think for me, at, at first it was, you know, of course, admitting that I needed to heal, right? Uh, kind of like you said. Which seeing, can be difficult for a man. Right, right, which can be difficult. Um, mm -hmm. So admitting that I needed to heal and admitting to the thing that I needed to heal from mm -hmm. and about, right? Um, admitting that to myself, admitting that to God. Mm -hmm. And that opened doors for me because um, then I'm not adding to the trauma anymore, mm -hmm. right? I'm not uh, putting any lies or assumptions on top of what trauma is already there, right? So that was really important for me. But again, there was that void there, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what do you fill it with? Um, that took a lot of patience, and I think that is something that you, you need to be aware of on your healing journey is, you know, it's, it's not for the weak, right? But you are strong, and you, you have to. Mm -hmm. You have to have mm -hmm. patience with yourself because that thing that you that you're filling that void with, that good thing, it might not come to you right away, right? Mm -hmm. You might have to wait, and you might just kind of be exposed for a while. And mm -hmm. so I felt that, and I think a lot of people feel that, and that, that vulnerability, that's the part that really scares people. And so patience was a virtue with me. And um, like Hannah mentioned, you know, um, leaning on some of the things that I, uh, that, that I learned in the past, whether from church or from people, um, so faith was really important for me, right? Um, trusting and believing in God and believing in myself, right? Mm. That I could come out of that situation, that something was going to come, right? That the right thing was going to come. Um, you have to trust the process of being intentional, mm. right? Trust the process of being intentional and trust the process of doing the right things. When you choose to heal, you're choosing to do the right thing. When you're choosing yeah. to Positivity. not let sex, not let uh, drugs, not lean on whatever those behaviors were, you're doing the right thing. And mm -hmm. when you're doing the right thing, good things are going to come, right? You're aligning yourself with for good things to come. So it takes a lot of faith, right, and trusting the process. Um, but sometimes before that, those good things come to, to fill that void. Now, what they eventually were, what some of those things were, um, was the truth, right? Um, as you're, as you're kind of um, going, you know, as you're going through, and you're, you're kind of poisoning yourself when you, when you're, when you're adding trauma on top of your trauma, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, you have assumptions, you have lies, you have things that you rely on from other people, stuff people have told you. And, and you're putting it all in this little box, and it gets jumbled up. It gets jumbled up, right? And a lot of confusion is there, right? Um, so when, when, when you're admitting, then you align yourself with the truth. So truth came in there. I mm. put truth in there, in, the, in that bag, in that field of void. Um, what else? Gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude yes. field of void. So even though whatever I've gone through, um, I'm grateful for where I am, right? Because one thing about it, I didn't admit it to where I am. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for that. That take a lot of strength right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that gratitude, putting, um, putting, uh, I want to say peace in there, but in intentional peace. You know, being mm -hmm. intentional about my peace. Um, and but I want to turn it over y'all because I got a question. The question just came. I got. So I got one Wait, more thing to yeah. add to that. <laughs> forgiveness is forgiveness. something. Oh, Self forgiveness yeah. is so important. We cannot heal and grow into the flower or blossom into the person that we were meant to be until we forgive ourselves for the decisions we've made in the past. So we'll we have forgiven ourselves from the people we may have hurt. Um, so self-forgiveness is so important. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I, like I said, I asked you guys, I'll answer it as well. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I've definitely been on a healing journey and mm -hmm. I, I got multiple stories that I could tell, but I'll share one. Okay. And I'm going to look at the camera when I say this. <laughs> All right. It is two... Two things. Pine saw okay. and furniture. Okay. Makes no sense, right? Mm -hmm. right What's the correlation here? Uh, makes no sense. Together. Pine saw and furniture. Okay. As a little kid, I would come home. Okay. If you open that door, getting off the bus. Smell like if it smelled like pine saw <laughs> and that furniture was rearranged, something wasn't right. Okay. Because my mom, what she would do is when something was bothering her, she mm -hmm. would 
then clean, clean cook, clean, clean, clean. move furniture, and then she would leave. Mm -hmm. She would either leave, stay going for the day because she worked her shift, and then go straight to work and come back the next day, or she would then leave and then go get a hotel or something for the day or the night, mm -hmm. and then come back the next day. Escape. Escape. Mm -hmm. But as a little kid, I never understood that mom was getting away because she was dealing with something. Mm -hmm. What I internalized was mom left. Mm -hmm. You. Yeah, mom left me. And that, that did hold some type of void in there. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't really make sense of it. And as I got older, especially, well, it's not even as I got older. Most recently, I had a conversation with my mom uh, when I was learning about this uh, intergenerational trauma and stuff like that. And I started asking these important questions like, you know, trying to understand my mom's story because her story impacted my story. Mm -hmm. So important. And that really shed a whole bunch of light on why she did some of the things that she did. Mm -hmm. So on part of my healing journey, like you said, was surrounding myself with people because we, uh, I think in the black community specifically and in the other community as well, but we heal in community. Mm. You, But we tend to isolate ourselves from each other because we feel like somebody's not going to see us, they're not going to hear us, and they're not going to understand us. Mm -hmm. So we isolate. But when you do come into a community with people that love, care about you, oh. then that's when you get the support that you need to continue to get that encouragement mm -hmm. to go on your healing journey. So and you have to know who to go to mm -hmm. as well. If someone, to, yeah, yeah, if someone hasn't started their healing process and you're expecting them to be emotionally mature. Mm -hmm. You might be disappointed. Yeah. You really might be disappointed. So you have to have that discretion to know who is emotionally mature to handle um, the situation you, you're going through and to offer that support that you need. And I'm so glad that you mentioned that healing doesn't start. It does start with you, but more importantly, um, your support system, but more importantly, your parents mm -hmm. are so influential in your healing journey because their traumas impact you um, significantly or even the people, the individuals that raised you, mm -hmm. their experiences and their childhoods impacts you in such a major level. So so when are good times to, to heal? Do, do I go and heal? Like, do I get somewhere and heal? Do I, you know, as soon as something comes up, oh, I got to go heal? Like, what, what's your thoughts on that? When are good times to heal? What does that look like? Will you start seeing disruption in your life in a certain area or multiple areas? I mm, think. So that could be, Excuse I see a pattern in relationships that I go for the same people. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I go for the same people or the same thing happens in every relationship as far as we can't communicate, can't get along. Mm -hmm. And what people will do most of the time, they'll mm -hmm. blame the other person. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll say this. taking accountability. Exactly. They say, well, they did this, or you always do this, and this makes me then respond this way. Mm -hmm. All right. And maybe what that person did has some type of impact on you. But that's not the true problem. Mm -hmm. The true problem is... Not what that person did, but how that person made you feel. Take responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. Responsibility. Exactly. Yeah. And I would tell people all the time, and I think we'll talk about this in another uh, episode, is about uh, communication. Mm -hmm. But in part of communicating is saying something like, I feel X. So I feel like, well, let's just say handle. Let's say you did. I statement. Yeah. I statement. I statement and I don't use but. I hate using the word but. I use and. Mm. I feel, oh, I felt embarrassed when you told um, Josh something about me. Mm -hmm. Versus saying, you told you, Josh you told something. something about me yeah. and, and now I'm embarrassed. And now I'm, yeah. It's, and now you that's the cause and effect, yeah. Right? Two totally different things. Two dynamics. totally yeah. different mm -hmm. things. It's about how I felt about what you did. And I think people, like I said, don't take responsibility for mm -hmm. how they play a part in it. So when you find disruption in relationships or you find conflict within the family, that's another mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. If you find that you're not able to do your job and I'd like the way you need to do so you find it, um, issues at job or if you're a kid finding issues with your intimate relationship uh, your personal relationships problems at school problems with parents and then hey oh maybe I need to take some time to step back and look at not what they're doing but how is it making me feel and then how am I responding to it mm -hmm. that's how I think you can tell when you're on when you need to begin a healing journey and you said something so important is that we have to take responsibility and accountability um, for our healing process. 
what I heard from that is that when we take accountability and responsibility over our lives and take control over our lives and um, our healing process, that empowers us. Mm -hmm. That empowers us on the inside to advance to another chapter or to another level in life. Another potential is unlocked that we didn't even know we had inside of us. Yes. So we have to take that accountability and um, we also have to recognize something that I've done in my own walk is recognize what role did I play in in my own hurt? Mm -hmm. You know, what did I allow? What did I say was okay before, but it really wasn't okay? What do I need to change? Hmm. What role did I take? Wow. Because people put up with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you that now. Mm-hmm. People will put up with a lot of stuff and say you, 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 and they put up with it because they're getting something from whatever situation they're in. And normally, most times, it's not all the time, but most times, what they're getting is probably something that they didn't receive growing up. Mm-hmm. That's why, like you said, or like we both said, you have to truly understand not just your story. But you know your parents' story, your caregiver story. You even got to truly understand grandma's story. Yep. You got to understand your brother and sister's story, your aunt and uncle's story, because all this family system mm-hmm. had yeah, an impact family. on one another, and that impacted how they showed up or didn't show up for you, why they did something or did not do something. And sometimes when we don't receive that, we go looking for it, mm-hmm. and then we will put up with a whole bunch of junk. Mm-hmm. Because this person is giving us this one thing, but they are doing so many other so things much. that's causing on, problems bro. and conflict. But right. we don't look at that because mm-hmm. they're giving us just this mm-hmm. one thing that I always wanted. And so I think learning your story and the story of your family is very important in, just, in understanding your healing journey and being able to heal from it. And you said family, but I also want to mention uh, you have to understand your partner's mm. healing story, too. Mm. You know, if, if you're very serious um, about somebody, you have to understand their background and their story. Um, have they started their healing process? What do they need to heal from um, or just their perspective about on healing? Um, I think that's so important mm-hmm. as well. And I just want to say, like, don't let someone else's healing journey or... Um, someone else's inability to heal hinder you from healing yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if your partner doesn't want to heal, don't let that hinder you from healing. You either need to separate um, or just stay in it so that you can influence somebody else. But it even comes down to your family. If your siblings or your parents or um, your grandparents, they don't want to heal, don't let that hinder you. Somebody has to, back to the conversations we had earlier, somebody has to be that example. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually that that's, that person deals with the most hurt, um, but impacts the most amount of people at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know we wind down a little bit. We still got a few, few more minutes. I wanted to ask y'all, uh, what is not healing? What does that look like if I'm... I don't take ownership for my healing and just not healing. What are the, what are the <laughs> repercussions behind that? Mm. All right. That's a good one. I'll say... <laughs> I got something. Got silent one. tears. Okay. okay. That's what it looks like. It looks like silent tears. Mm. Because you may not cry, or people might not see you cry, but you will be hurting on the inside. hmm because everything that has gone on in your life, everything that is not going the way that you want it to go, is going to hurt you. Until? Until you begin to heal. Until you take that responsibility, until you have that awareness, those silent tears are going to continue to come. And you're going to continue to have questions like, why me? Mm-hmm. Why does it have to happen to me? Why did they have to do this to me? Instead of saying, what can I do in order to begin to heal? Mm-hmm. So I think silent tears is what you'll get if you do not begin your healing journey. I, I love that um, analogy. And I would say that not healing looks like a lot of denial. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of denial, denial, self-denial. I think the biggest, one of the worst things we can do is lie to ourselves. And when you do not heal, you tend to lie to yourself. Oh, I'm not that bad. Oh, this situation didn't impact me um, like I think it is. Oh, I'm tough enough or resilient enough to get past this um, and deal with what life has 
to offer me or what I've experienced in life. Um, but when we continue that process of not choosing to heal, we're only hurting ourselves. But more importantly, in the long run, we're hurting the people around us too. Yeah. Man, I'm going to tell y'all, um, so something that's big for me, I'm I'm kind of a people person. I like to, you know, uh, it's good to see people happy, right? It's good mm-hmm. to be able to support people. Um, when I feel as though when you don't heal, when you're not effectively healing, not properly healing, you're not able to show up for people mm. like you, like a person like me would really want to, <laughs> right? I get energy from that, right? From seeing people, from being able to support people. And I'm sure you all in your professions, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Being there for someone, being able to help guide them and support them. But when I'm not on point, when I haven't healed, and and I'm still, you know, I got blocks up, you know, because I'm still dealing with trauma and I'm not... I'm not really dealing with it. I'm just going... I'm letting it deal with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to be there for my loved ones like I want to. So when you said that, um, uh, talking about you know your loved ones, that that kind of hit home for me because I want to be there, and you got a lot of people that want to be there, um, right? That want to be in their children's lives more, that want to be in um, you know, their nephew, nieces, whatever mm-hmm. lives more, friends, and, and and that trauma sometimes and not healing that gets in the way of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I think, and I also you know. I mean, to that point, not being able to show up as your best self, right? Mm-hmm. We talk about living living our best lives. To live your best life, you got to show up as your best self, mm-hmm. right? To, to really get the most out of your life. And so not being able to show up as your best self because you haven't healed, man, you're just robbing yourself. Yeah. Right. You're robbing yourself of, uh, of the joy or the peace or the happiness, you know, that, 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 that you could have. And um, to me, it's also uh, not healing. It's like giving up control. Right, mm-hmm. giving up control of uh, of your life, of your well being, to to something else, whether it be to uh, to uh, to to you know whatever you're going through, um, you know, it's, it's giving up that control, and it's not being in control, and that's a very scary thing. I don't have children, but I know that when a person does not heal, that directly impacts parenting that mm-hmm. directly impacts your children um, and like you were saying Terrence your situation um, it impacts so many things on the relationship between a parent and their child um, so not healing is really hurting your child or children mm-hmm. more than you know um, or more than you even have the capability to understand right now but when you think about things long term, um, in my personal experience, healing can sometimes come um, like once your child is an adult. Um, and I think it's so important that healing just happens. It doesn't necessarily matter when it happens, but as soon as you recognize that, okay, this situation impacted me, um, I might need to process things some more, apologize to other people, once you recognize that, have those honest conversations. And I feel like um, having those honest conversations about healing, especially with the dynamic between a parent and a child, it brings you all closer. I absolutely agree with that, 100%. I'm actually going to say a quote. It's actually Give two it to quotes us. that I put together. Okay. <laughs> so this is what it is. Yes, sir. If you do not heal mm. from what has cut you, Mm. You will bleed on those who have not hurt you. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Because hurt people hurt people. They do. Yeah. Come on. So that that I think that quote, or quotes, because I, I did put two <laughs> together, speaks volumes because if you're not on your healing journey, you'll continue to hurt people around you. Because you're unable to show up authentically. You're unable to interact with them in a way that's going to satisfy both of y'all relational needs or it's not going to allow you, like you said, to parent that mm-hmm. person correctly. Um, you know, it's this whole thing that I could get into about attachment, about, you know, childhood trauma, how that impacts parenting styles. And because I did a presentation on that like, last week or so. Like, Congrats um, on that. It's appreciated. Mm-hmm. I'm on, I'm on, I, even though I'm on my healing journey, I find that 
because I didn't answer this question earlier, but what I have I replaced it with? I'm on my healing journey because helping healing other people kind of fills my cup. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like then I have a purpose. I can use my story to mm-hmm. help someone else. Same. And that's kind of mm-hmm. what I filled it with. Uh, continuing mm-hmm. to learn more about the topic of intergenerational trauma and how that impacts uh, families and relationships and things like that. And then putting together products or putting together things that will then help heal other people. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like not only am I healing myself and healing my family, I'm helping other families heal. So that's what I filled it with. And this, that position is not easy at all Mm -hmm. because people in our communities are looking at us as the positive people and as the, the lights, um, the go-to people when you're feeling emotionally um, unwell or uh, mentally unwell Um, So that position comes with a lot of responsibility, Mm -hmm. which makes it even more important to continuously heal, Mm -hmm. continuously heal. So I just want to emphasize this is not a linear process. Like we have to wake up every day and be intentional um, about becoming a better version of ourselves. And we can only do do that through healing. And I got I got one quote too. I know our time is far spent. Ooh, I sound like I'm in turn. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you long. <laughs> you know what I, mean? hold you long. I got so time. We gonna wrap it up. I had, I had a quote Go. too. Um, some that some that was on my mind. Um, so uh, it is a commitment, right? So mm-hmm. I encourage everybody make the commitment to your Please. to your healing is your responsibility. Make the commitment. Um, the the quote that kind of came to mind was make a commitment to your soul and not your ego. Your soul wants to understand so you can be free. Your ego wants to win because that's what it thinks being free is about. Mm -hmm. Your ego says, cover it up, numb it, run from it. The soul says, be present with it. Give it your love and compassion. Become whole, not half. So Mm -hmm. uh, make that commitment. Make that commitment. I I like that quote that you um, just said. And something I've learned through my with my therapist is that that pain sometimes cuts so deep. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a type of pain we may have never felt before. Be present, present. feel that pain. Don't run from it. Don't escape or don't mask it with drugs or gambling. Feel that pain, process it, you know, journal about it, talk to somebody about it, express it. And then let's heal. Yes. Sometimes it's to teach you something too. Mm -hmm. It is because our emotions and the feelings that we have they're all about giving you information. A lot of times we do not listen to the information it's given us because it is trying to tell you something that you like, something that you don't like, and when you try to hide it or mask it or do something to cover it up, you're not truly getting the information that you need in order for your body to respond to it. Mm-hmm. So what happens is it gets louder and louder and louder, mm-hmm. and that's could be an explanation of why, like if you're using drugs, they say, oh, your tolerance increases because the more that you mm-hmm. use, your body adapts to it. Well, let's think about this. If your emotions <laughs> is like a drug and you continue to ignore it, right, your tolerance builds up. Mm-hmm. It's got to come back harder the next time. And that's why people continue to suffer in silence with those silent tears. Wow. Great discussion. Really powerful, really powerful. New um, host. Yeah, yeah. New host on the um, team. So we are speaking with Gravity, speaking with Gravity Podcast. You can find us on uh, your social media outlets. Um, of course, it's at Speaking with Gravity. Um, so uh, definitely look for us out there. Uh, if you're looking for myself, as um, on most outlets, at Garvey, the number four press. What about you, Hannah? Yes, you can find me on Instagram at Hannah Elise, two underscores. Uh, you can find me at Terrence Dawkins underscore L I S W C P. Terrence Dawkins underscore L I S W C P. Yes, sir. And so please join us next time, y'all. We'll be looking for you. Uh, uh, next episode will drop on. Um, next episode is Overcoming Adversity. It'll drop on March the 7th. Uh, that'll be episode 66. So we're moving on up, y'all. Moving yeah. uh, on up. So great time with you all. Please reach out to us. Um, to further this conversation and many more. So, looking forward to seeing you next time. Tune in. See you guys.